right. Should see a jam from... Oh, yeah, we're going to get some action here. Help Patron looking to get his chips back from Al Wilson. This ace-king versus queens is going to be a classic coin flip situation. If Al Patron... Okay, there we go. Flop. Oh, wow, man. The runouts are really rough in this tournament for Al Patron. First, the king's losing to ace-jack suited on the turn not flush. Now this time, can we run that one again? All right, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Million Dollar Monday. Today we are mixing it up with some extra action because there have been some special events running on America's Card Room these past couple of weeks. Uh, this past weekend we just had the Moss main event. The Moss is the beginning to the uh, OSS Cube Series, which has the Moss Mini Online Super Series, the Online Super Series, and the Boss, the bigger Online Super Series. This was the main event of the Mini portion. $55 buy-in, 500,000 total prize pool uh, was the guarantee. And they just came up shy with 9,338 players. So we had some slight overlay. Uh, everyone who made it to this final table here is guaranteed $6,000. Seventh is going to get $11,006, $15,750. Fifth place, $20,750. Fourth is going to be $29K. Third, $41,750. Second, $57,750. And first place in this Moss main event is going to be taking home $77,700. We did a quick shark scope on our players. The players to watch, the ones to watch are going to be the chip leader, Hold Up Baryu, Lappy Poker, a uh, poker streamer and tournament crusher, and Patrick Starr. Uh, Al Wilson was hidden from search, so we don't know too much about him. And the other players had uh, positive results but smaller results. We're going to keep an eye on these three. Our second place stack is Patrick Starr with 35 bigs. Third place stack, Al Wilson with 30 big blinds. Basically tied with Lappy Poker on 29 big blinds there. So these are our bigger stacks to be watching is these four. And then we have four shorter stacks. Gallon, 14 bigs. Al Patron with 16, probably soon to be about 20 blinds. Uh, Ari FTW on 14 blinds. And Sir Engineiro on 12. Uh, we'll toggle with the speed of the replayer if there it looks like there's nothing really going to happen on a hand like this particular one here where ace king's clearly getting through we'll just do a faster replay and go on to the next hand and when it looks like we're going to have something interesting we'll slow things down so we can sweat it uh, patrick here going to take the open going to be interesting to see what al wilson does he's got ace 10 suited a very nice hand he's facing a mid position open from one of the bigger stacks who should be opening a wider range so maybe a spot where he wants to three bet maybe a spot where he wants to flat take a flop in position maybe a spot where he doesn't want to tangle with the big stack he is going to go for the three bet i like it quite a lot uh, it's it's really important to recognize that the bigger stacks are typically going to be doing a lot of stealing and opening a wider range which means when faced with a three bet they're usually just not going to be able to do anything about it they're not going to be able to take the heat and they're usually just going to have to fold when faced with that three bet so i'm going to argue ak is more than good enough to induce yeah on final tables raising into the field if you're gonna induce ace king in my experience you generally want to be doing it from late position where people are expecting you to open with a wider range and jam over you rather than from early position because generally uh, we're going to be raising mostly strong hands from early position and therefore there's not going to be a whole lot of inducing to do usually the hands that are going to be um reshoving over the top versus an early position open will be the same hands that would just call an all in Hold up, using the big stack, going for the steal here. Going to get it through, not going to get it through. Al Bari, Al Patron, defending, flopping top two. And now what do you do if you're Hold a Bari? One and done? Seems like the way to go. Al Patron, strong enough hand. Can definitely just call here. Doesn't really need to fear being outdrawn. Two pairs, an extremely strong hand. Extremely unlikely you're going to get outdrawn. You hate to see the five because if your opponent had an over pair, you're, he's not going to have an overpair very often. You just, you'd rather have not seen a five, but the hand is clearly good. And probably now worth betting for a little bit of protection. If your opponent has an overcard, jack, queen, king, or ace, and he hits that pair, now he's going to have a bigger two pair. Aces and fives is better than tens and eights. So don't mind a bet there. El Patron decides to check back to induce. Let's see if he can get a bluff out of his opponent. King, not a bad card to barrel on. 
Uh, it does put a 10 that was once top pair now in second pair territory and eight which was second pair now in third pair territory and therefore it's an okay spot to bluff uh, interesting El Patron doesn't go for the bet there probably because of what I was talking about the fact that uh, two pair can be counterfeit and here ooh, interesting Gala Ace Jack suited definitely a nice looking hand do we like the shove off of 13 or does it feel like it's a little bit too many I, I feel like for 10 it's definitely a shove 13 and a half oh man feels close feels close unlucky to run into it here oh man I don't know if it's quite quite strong enough but he's gonna take it he's gonna run into ace king and uh Ari for the win certainly gonna be calling here hand as strong as ace king obviously doesn't love calling all in with one shorter stack but he is one of the shortest stacks in the field um, and you can't worry too much about trying to outlast other people when there are no micro stacks like if Sir Engineer had four bigs maybe you don't want to flip but Ace King just way too strong so we see a good call here 70-30 favorite and Ari for the win is going to get the win here chopping Gala down to point two big blinds yo Mr. Chuck Norris thanks for the love glad you're enjoying these streams um, I certainly am too it's, it's always fun to do these reviews I think it's really one of the best learning opportunities we get in poker okay uh, I think Al Wilson would probably just see a fold with twos easy open here for Ari with the ace queen Gala probably should just call off and the reason why is because he's putting in one big blind to play for effectively six doesn't need a very good chance to win for it to be profitable and he has a suited king flops a flush draw he's up against trips if a club comes gala stays in the game otherwise he's out ari's hit strong enough he can bet for value here um normally in a dry side pot you don't need to do a lot of like betting right there's no reason to do like bluffing or anything but because ari can get paid by ace jack ace 10 ace 9 all kinds of worse aces it makes sense for him to bet and uh, build up this pot on those instances where Patrick Starr has an ace as well. Decides to get deceptive, check back. Now he has a full house, Gala drawing dead. One downside to this turn card is that Ari's kicker no longer plays. So what he's trying to do is give Patrick a chance to bluff at it, which Patrick did not take. And yet you can also charge the flush draws, that's correct, you can charge the flush draws get value from a worse ace, get a little bit of protection against a gut shot, like a 2-3, 3-4, three, three, two, 3-4. Three, Ari gets the knockout there against Gala. Most of the damage was done when the ace king held against the ace jack suited. And with that elimination, Gala is going to be our seventh, eighth place finisher, taking home $6,000. And that's a very big pay jump. The jump from ninth to eighth was $1,100. The jump from eighth to seventh is $5 thousand dollars everyone remaining now guaranteed 5k i think we'll see a raise here from lappy um guaranteed eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand dollars min payout then it goes to 15 750 big pay jumps here on this final table almost 100 buy-ins per interesting reshove here from sir engineero because lappy only has 24 blinds I don't think he's going to be opening as a steal that much, which creates an interesting spot because if if Sir Engineero knows that, he shouldn't be going all in with a hand that's all that weak, which means Lappy sixes don't look that strong. That being said, seven and a half more blinds to play for a pot of about 20. The price is decent and it's for a third of Lappy's chips. I think we'll probably see a call. Yeah, he does make the call. Lappy knows what's up. He's a shark, a great player. And I'm not a fan of the reshove there from Sir Engineero. I just think there's a better spot. Um, Lappy's not the guy who's opening ultra wide. And, and ace five is not, the, it's not a very good hand. Granted, Sir Engineero was the shortest stack, but I think he probably could have found a better spot. So a uh, great spot there for Lappy Poker getting the knockout. And just like that, we're down to six players. Everyone guaranteed $15,750. Huge payouts here on this $55 Moss main event final table, 500K guaranteed. 
These players were playing for 10 hours, 10 and a half hours on day two. <laughs> that doesn't even include day one, which is probably another five. This is about a 16 hour tournament. <clears throat> That's why, you know, when people say, some people say, you know, poker is a, whoa, what is going on with these hands? Some crazy stuff. I got to see this one back from the start. Yeah, when people say that poker is a bit of a, a marathon sport, that's what they're talking about. I know you're sitting in the chair, you're just thinking you're doing your mind games, your mental gymnastics, but 16 hours of doing anything takes some strength. Okay, so Patrick Jack5 offsuit. Why? I don't understand this at all. Just give the guy a walk. Your hand is garbage. You, you don't out chip him. I, I understand none of this. Why is he doing this? Al betting the flop makes total sense. He probably flopped the best hand. Top pair, great kicker. Looking to get some value. And Patrick Starr just feeling like getting out of line. Decides to go for a little bluff race here with uh, one over card and a backdoor straight draw. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it works out for him. Al doesn't love the turn. So if Patrick did want to go balls to the wall, this is the kind of turn card that he would need for this play to work. It will be an awkward spot for Al if faced with a big bet. I'm just, I'm just confused why Patrick just decided to do this. Maybe it's because he's, his name's Patrick star five and he fives his favorite number or something. So he likes the five in his hand or he's a big fan of Jack's five. I don't know. I'm very confused by this. Uh, if we're in Al's shoes, what do you think chat? Do we like a value bet or do we like a check? to allow our opponent to bluff. Straight draw did complete. I think probably a blocker bet makes the most sense here. Bet like three bigs or something. He's going for the induce. Is Patrick gonna follow through on his oh so ambitious bluff? The jack eights miss, the eight sevens miss. We now beat the other two pairs, although those two pairs probably would have kept betting on the turn. Patrick's hand doesn't make a lot of sense. Probably because his hand is nonsense. All right. That hand, quite confusing. Uh, worked out for Al Wilson. He chipped up. And that's the thing. You, you, In the huge field events, 5,000, 10,000 people, in the buy-in range from, you know, $5 up to $50, you see some funky stuff. And that's the fun of watching these final tables of all buy-in ranges and not just the final tables of the high stakes buy-in ranges is that you get to see some really funny and funky plays that make you realize there's a lot of value in these tournaments if you can make it deep. All right, because just because you have chips doesn't mean you have to put them in play. Just because you're the big stack doesn't mean you need to try to knock everybody out. There's a big misconception that as a big stack, it's your job to take people out of the tournament. Not at all. Try to take people out when it makes sense. Uh, otherwise, as the big stack, you have the least pressure on you. And you can let the blinds increase and put a lot of pressure on everyone else. Well, you just kind of chill and bide your time and pick your spots. Patrick, pretty wide defend here with queen four offsuit, but flops top pair. He won't be going anywhere. Al probably just going to one and done this. Don't think we'll see a two barrel here. Now, one of our unknown players. River's the ace. It's going to give him the best hand. So if you're in Patrick's shoes again, what do you do? Blocker bet? Induce a bluff? Checking. I think if Al bets small, we'll see a call. Probably anything half pot or less. If Al bets big, two-thirds of the pot or greater, maybe enough to scare Patrick off. So I'm like in a three to five big blind bet here. Every time you're, you're, you're value betting on the river. Interesting. Doesn't even bet. Kind of surprised by that. Uh, you got to think about what kind of hand am I wanting my opponent to call with? And what's the largest bet they would call with that hand? So in that case, you've got the pair of aces. You can either say, I want to target a queen. How much do I think a queen will call? Or you could say, I want to target any pair. How much do I think a six, seven, or queen will call? You could choose your bet size accordingly. Now, if you think that a six or a seven won't call any bet, 
then you might as well just focus on what's the biggest bet a queen can call. Whereas if the board runs out where you're like, I think any pair that he has is going to call a bet, then you can go with that smaller size and it's going to get called by a wider range of hands. Hope that makes sense. All right, both players catch a little piece of this board here. It's top pair for Patrick. It's second pair for Al Wilson. Open ender for Patrick as well. Now a gut shot for Al. Should see a bet and a call. And on this river, if Patrick sizes it right, he may be able to get looked up. Al Wilson's hand's looking pretty strong. Whenever the board pairs, it decreases the likelihood that your opponent has that card. And uh, some of the straight draws have missed. Spade draws have missed, and Al's got a decent kicker. So blind versus blind. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Al make the call here, and he does. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a cooler. You know, full ring game, deep stack, set over set, that's cooler. Blind versus blind, often uh, top pair versus second pair is a bit of a cooler, especially as the pot doesn't get too large. The big blind is going to call with a lot of different cards because of the odds offered. So usually the player who raises in position is going to have a stronger range of hands. And on the boards where no one hit anything, he who has the stronger range or she who bets is usually going to win that pot. Patrick Shark Scope was average buy in 60. And prior to this game was up about 10K on one and a half K games. Whoa. Let's run this back. Oh, the pot looks <laughs> the pot looks so big because the blinds are so big. Five mil, ten mil. But really. I beg. Hold the betting, assuming that if El Patron's going to raise most of his aces, El Patron with the gut shot calls. Hold is still sticking to that thesis that El Patron would have raised most of his aces pre-flop. And um, it's interesting. Patron picks up a gut uh, flush draw to go with his gut shot. Does make the call. And now hold it. Do we follow through? This pot's gotten quite hefty. Quite chunky. He's going to fire the last bullet. El Patron, I think he got a call. I think once you've improved to your 10 high flush, you got a call. And that's exactly what he does. And hold it gives up a lot of chips there to El Patron, who is now our tournament chip leader, just like that. Okay, I think El Patron has an open here. Ace deuce. Patrick Starr with an easy jam if it folds to him. Lappy debating a three bet here. These are some tier three blockers. Jacks and tens. Tier ones are your aces. Tier twos, your kings and queens. Tier threes, your jacks and tens. Lappy does go for the three bet with the tier threes. We see it, it would work against Al Patron. He's just going to be unlucky to get ambushed here by Patrick Starr. Picks up ace king. That's going to be a jam for Patrick and should be a fold from the other two. Yeah. And okay, we're about to see some action. Patrick with an opening hand. Al Wilson, this is a good enough hand to go all in with here. 15 blinds, loose opener, good spot to go all in. There's no way to know these kings are here. This ace jack should probably be getting played. He's also second shortest stack. I'd imagine we're seeing this money go in. Yeah. Now Kings, easy call here. This is what we call getting ambushed. Al Wilson, super unlucky to run into this hand. King 10 suit now gonna fold and we are playing a 400 million pot. Wow! Top pair and a flush draw. Ace Jack goes from being a 70-30 underdog to a 52% favorite. Turns the nut flush and Al Patron is devastated. Absolutely devastated. You hate to see it if you're Al. No, you hate to see it if you're L. You love to see it if you're Al. And just like that, Al Wilson is our chip leader. Wow. What a hand. All right. Should see a jam from... Oh, yeah. We're going to get some action here. Al Patron looking to get his chips back from Al Wilson. This ace king versus queens is going to be a classic coin flip situation. 
If El Patron, okay, there we go. Flop, oh, wow, man. The runouts are really rough in this tournament for El Patron. First, the Kings losing to Ace Jack, suited on the turn, not flush. Now this time, can we run that one again? It all happened so fast, I barely even caught it. This turn card, this turn card, just devastation nation. El Patron. Great flop. You love to see it. And then, oof. The pain is real. The pain is real. You know, I'd say it's a $5,000 hit, but it's more because it's not just the 5,000 missed out from the pay jump. It's also the 236,000. It would have been an average stack. It's a big ICM pain. Either way, uh, El Patron, CR. Nice run. Gonna be our gonna be our sixth place finisher taking home fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifty US dollars. And we are now down to the final five. All these players, Lappy Poker, Patrick Starr, Al Wilson, Ari, and Holda Barayu, guaranteed twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. And how about that? So far, all three of our players we said were the ones to watch are still in the running with five players left. It's going to be hard to imagine nines getting out of the way. But freaking dicey, though. For all the chips, again, that same question. Is Patrick doing this with eights, sevens, sixes? Is he going to show up with worse pairs? Or is his range comprised exclusively of bigger pairs? Tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king. In which case, it's not really worth, you know, gambling with two-thirds of your stack if you call and lose you're in last if you just fold you maintain first place tough spot for al might just have to lay it down if he had like 60 blinds i could see him calling but since it's such a significant portion of his chips he's probably gonna fold if it were button versus big blind maybe we see the call because now eight seven sixes might make their way into the range but Chip leader versus second place for all the chips. Uh, ranges should be pretty tight. So, um, yeah, I, th I think a fine fold there for Al. And now with what we've seen from Lappy, he may shove here with the uh, suited baby ace. Button versus cutoff. It's a nice chip up 25%. And he's going to run into it here. This time, I don't think we're going to see Al Wilson folding ace king suited here. It's... um. It's a bit more premium than nines. It dominates a lot of the hands that Lappy Poker is doing this with. The ace queens, ace jacks, ace tens, king queen suited, the ace two suited. Um, yeah, you're flipping against some pairs, but you're crushing a lot of the range too. So I think Al Wilson's going to call here and Lappy's going to need some help. If Al did not wake up with ace king though, hold a Barayu, probably going to fold ace ten to this shove. So that's why this is a really nice semi bluff. You get better hands than yours to fold. You increase your stack significantly when they do. When you run into a hand, you still have a 30% chance to win. Um, that's for a lot of chips. So Lappy gonna need his 30% of the time. Not looking good on that flop. Drawing dead on the turn. And Lappy Poker, Justin Lapka, fellow Twitch streamer, gonna be our fifth place finisher. Taken home. $20,750. And with that knockout, Al Wilson is our new chip leader. 652 million in chips. That's 46 big blinds. He's got almost half the chips in play. Ari with 12. Holda with 15. That's 17. Patrick with this. It's 40, 42. And Al with a 47. So everyone in this tournament has done a fantastic job. Guaranteed $30,000 on a $50 buy-in. We'll see who's going to emerge victorious here. At this point, you got to put the money on Al Wilson. Having the most chips by a lot. And with the pay jumps being what they are, you know, $12,000 pay jump from fourth to third. $28,000 pay jump from fourth to second. These players are going to want to outlast each other. 
And so Al Wilson can put a ton of pressure on Patrick Starr and the other stacks. Like he could just jam here. It's very hard for Ari to call. Ari can't call with Queen Jack. And there's so many hands that Ari's gonna raise here that can't call a shove. So nice play by Al Wilson here, just putting the max pressure. Um, you gotta think a lot of the better hands Ari has would just shove too. So he's got a few traps, some aces, kings and stuff. And then a lot of hands that are raising because they have blockers. Like we saw Queen Jack, Ace 10, King Jack, things like that. And those are gonna fold to a shove. So nice play by Al Wilson. But yeah, we're gonna see Al really open it up here. Should be going for lots of steals. And everyone else now, you know, these two guys are just trying to outlast each other to make that extra 12K. Easy raise here for Al. Patrick Starr's getting no free flops. A little surprised Al Wilson didn't raise this pre-flop. I guess the reason was they didn't want to get Lemprey raised, but it felt like a good time to just keep the pedal to the metal max pressure. Now if Patrick bets, he's bluffing. I think it's goes check check. Whoa! This hand just got crazy. Al Wilson just had like super easy check behind with the three. Instead, he bats to try to fold out like a six? Or is he trying to get value from a worse three? And Patrick Starr recognizes that Al is not that likely to have a king the way he played it. Not very likely to have a jack the way he played it. Goes for the check raise all in. This is going to work. I don't see how Al could make this hero call. And as I said, Al can easily apply pressure to Holda and Ari, but Patrick Starr really just is super degaff here and has no fear of putting the chips in. Wow. What a play. What a play from Patrick Starr. Picking up a very nice pot. With these two short stacks there too, man. No fear this guy. I love it. That's poker, baby. I think for 10 blinds, Al can shove here. Ari has the best hand. Probably won't call an all-in. Wow. Ari does make the correct call with Queen-10 offsuit. Had the best hand, was dominating. I'm not a fan of the call because most of the time, if you're ahead, you're not ahead by that much. And we got these two short stacks here and there's a lot of value to outlast him. But let's watch that one again. Does make the correct call this occasion and just gets absolutely ravaged on the flop. Gets absolutely ravaged on the flop. Can you imagine how Ari feels? You put your balls on the table and make a huge call with queen high for 10 big blinds so that you can double up and have a chance at third place and maybe better for 41K. And instead, ACR deals you this run out and just says, yeah, you get in fourth. Nice, nice call, sir. How about um, 29,000 for fourth? No top three for you. Oh, so sick, man. Oh, the pain. Uh, with that hand, Ari's going to be our fourth place finisher. With that hand, Ari is going to be our fourth place finisher. Taking home $29,000. An absolutely brutal way to go out. But what can you do? Sometimes the cards just aren't on your side. Everyone remaining now getting $41,750. Epic final table we've had here for this Moss main event. Patrick, I don't think he can call here. Has a very strong hand, but still. With Holda Barayu being so short, with there being a $16,000 pay jump from third to second. This guy having eight bigs. I don't think Patrick can call with ace queen here. You know he wants to. We've seen how Patrick's playing. Guy's got no fear. He doesn't want to be pushed around. But I think the math and the numbers just dictate. He's got to lay this one down.
This guy is, uh... He's stubborn, though. Patrick is very stubborn. I gotta say, I've had an absolute blast watching Patrick Star play this final table. Like, if this guy had 20 blinds, I think Patrick's calling. But with this guy only having 8 blinds, I just don't think he can call. Like, I mean, I think he's folding this spot anyway, but then, then to be disconnected, three-handed, it's brutal. So now, okay, so now Al Wilson could just go crazy. Al Wilson could just go crazy. Because second place is never calling him because he's sitting out. And so hold a Barayu. Oh, this is so unlucky. Hold a Barayu needs to figure out how to find a double up. Because if he just folds... And we know that Patrick's going to fold every hand while he's sitting out. Um, he's going to go up before Patrick. Whereas if he can get a double, he'd actually need two doubles. So he's going to have to find a way to get some chips. Because um, he's just going to keep getting chopped down. Okay, we're going to see a shove here from Al Wilson. Probably a... F oh, wow. Hold a Barayu decides queen eight. Good enough to call. I guess he's knowing he's really short. Still don't know if you want to get it in with the hand this week. He's going to need a heart, an eight, or a queen on the river. And he gets the heart. He gets the heart. He's got the big heart and commitment to the game. And now we've got ourselves a poker game. Now we've got ourselves a poker game. You may see a shove here from Holda. It's a suited connector. It's a 20% chip up. He can get better hands to fold. Eight high, nine high, ten high. Jack high. All these hands are going to fold. Does not though. Takes the free flop. And now Patrick's got a piece. Patrick's got a piece with the gutter. Picks up a flush draw to go with it. Now Holder's got a pair. Could get dicey. All right. Patrick's, Patrick's got to bluff at this. He knows queen high isn't the best hand. The ace is a great scare card on the river. Does not bluff. Man, of, I'm so surprised with how wild Patrick has played and shown such a willingness to just go for it and go hard. I'm just so surprised that he didn't take that spot. Like, what a great spot to bluff. He's like, nah, this, this is not for me. Wild. Just goes to show, man. Like... You never know what's... And, and also because like Holder Barayu probably would have like gone all in preflop with all his aces. So he doesn't have a lot of ace -X. Just crazy, man. Just crazy. Maybe... Yeah, good point. Maybe a little rattled from being disconnected. Kind of kind of took him out of his, uh, his zone a little bit. Anyway, he's back at it. He's back at it. Putting the pressure back against Holder Barayu. And this might be it. I think on nine blinds that having an ace here is a strong enough hand to move all in with the short stack into the middle stack. And uh, Patrick will certainly be calling with ace king. I don't really see how Holda gets away from this uh, with an ace on such a short stack. Yeah, just unlucky. Snap call there for Patrick and he is going to get the knockout here. Just a bit of a cold deck there for Holda Barai, who's going to be taking third place, $41,750. A very nice result. Uh, well played final table. And Patrick certainly earned his spot heads up here with some great plays, some great flair, some great re-aggression against the aggression of Lappy. He picked some great spots to play back. That three bet with ace four against Al's ace jack. I mean, Patrick's just played really well. And so he's earned this minimum payout of $57,750. And uh, whoever wins this heads up match is going to be getting an extra 20 grand on top for a total payout of $77,700. Who's your money on chat? Who's going to win? We can't do a poll because the information is available and that would be that would be rigged or we can't do a prediction. But in good faith, you guys can get your bets in. Al Wilson has a two to one chip lead. We've seen Patrick. He's willing to make a lot of plays, but we've also seen 
from that jack eight that al wilson ain't no slouch either he's willing to make some plays too and uh so we could see the boys get pretty frisky here heads up yeah so two to one chip lead for al so he's the favorite in that regard it's 865 million for al versus the 534 million for patrick um, but anything can happen heads up they're 30 30 blinds deep effective it's lots of chips it's lots of play and uh there's a lot more time left on the clock here so i'm going to speed things up a little bit for heads up because these matches can can take a long time to play out and a lot of times just no one really has anything so there's too much to talk about um, but we'll always slow it down when a hand looks like it's going to be developing into a more interesting, complex situation. Min raise call, flops top pair. Bet and a call, makes sense. Then it go check, check on the turn. Okay. I guess Patrick's thinking that maybe Al could be bluff raising with a jack 10, 8, 10, miss straight draw kind of hand turning a nine or a seven into a bluff because on the club completing ace river it's such a super scare card there's so much he can represent we know patrick's kind of sticky he's kind of stubborn makes the call here ends ends up being incorrect um would have been a good spot to fold and i guess he's thinking too if al has an ace he's just calling so when he's raising he's either got a flush or nothing maybe ace nine ace seven maybe maybe two pairs and flushes he can raise but not a single single pair of aces so patrick's thinking his opponent's pretty polarized there Ooh, nice flop here for al wilson flop and trips his opponent patrick not having much of it so not that likely to get paid off just just 20 million just a little hit of 20 million or so Let's see if al checks gives his opponent more rope he does Patrick not going for it. It's maybe a spot where Al could get a small bit of value actually because Patrick may think that it's a chop. Thinking there aren't a lot of aces there. He does. He does call for the, for the split pot. And now Al Wilson has a six to one chip lead. And it may all be over soon. It may all be over soon. Ace nine suited. Going to be good enough to shove. Goes for the induce instead. Oh, and on this flop. GG! It's the nut flush for Al Wilson. It's the second nut flush for Patrick Starr. Man's drawn dead. Man's drawn dead. No straight flush possibilities. Congratulations, Al Wilson, 23 on the dub, taking home $77,700. Patrick Starr, second place, taking home $57,750. A pretty nice result for a $50 buy-in tournament. 1,000 buy-ins for Patrick. 1,500 buy-ins for Al Wilson. They're just going to trap each other. Wait till they want to get it out. Are we going to get a min bet here? Yeah, we'll get a min bet. Patrick just gonna call. They're playing all tricky and trappy. And now we'll see uh, either the shove or, yeah, it's probably just a shove. There's no reason to not go for all of it. He's got three quarters of a pot size bet left. Put the money in the middle and uh, ship it to Papa. Ship it to Papa. 1.4 billion chips going Al Wilson's way. And he is gonna be our champion in the Moss main event 500K, guaranteed. Great final table. Great final table, very well played. If I do say so myself. Here's your final leaderboard. Your final payouts, Al Wilson with the dub 77,700, well deserved. Played solid, brought in the aggression when he needed it to. Overall, it's pretty just selective, made it work. Patrick Starr in there battling, going to war. Definitely earned his spot getting a heads up. It was an absolute pleasure watching him go after this final table. Holda played solid. Ari, solid. Lappy, very aggressive. And uh, El Patron, sixth. Sanjanero, seventh. And Gala, eighth. 
Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the review.